ask a follow-up. All right, let's take uh, Abtin's question. Which modern country or culture has the healthiest attitude towards sex? You know, I don't know. It's really hard to tell because the modern attitudes towards sex alternate between the Christian attitude towards sex, which dominates, I think, American society, and its backlash, which is a materialistic view of sex and for promiscuity. Um, you know, strip clubs, uh, uh, prostitution, and all of that. And, and just o overly promiscuity among young people when it comes to sex. So that's American culture, which I think is a very unhealthy culture because it's dominated by a Christian attitude towards sex and the backlash to that. I mean, I, I generally think that, that uh, the attitude towards sex is healthier in Europe. It tends to be more promiscuous, but, but I think that's it's not a bad thing necessarily. That is, it depends how promiscuous it is. Um, it's not quite as a, it's not quite as, I don't know, fixated on, on rejecting Christianity because I think they rejected Christianity, at least this part of Christianity a long time ago. It's too materialistic in, in, um, in, uh, in Europe. Um, but, I, you know, but there's no culture that is abandoned materialism today. So, and then there's like the Indian Kama Sutra attitude towards sex. But it, and it's hard. I don't know enough about that culture. I don't know how spiritual that is. It, it seems, at least from the Kama Sutra poses, it seems very kind of physical and materialistic and pleasure-oriented. And I think, I think to the extent that it's pleasure-oriented, that's a good thing. I'm all for focusing on pleasure and enhancing pleasure and figuring out ways to enhance pleasure. And, and you know, if, if that means 225 poses, then so be it. I don't, I'm not against that. But again, I don't know that any culture today or any cult country today has the right balance of the spiritual value of sex with the physicality, with the, with the, um, uh, uh, pleasure aspect of sex and combining those two because of course the spiritual aspect of sex dramatically enhances the pleasure aspect of, of, of sex but the pleasure aspect of sex can't be ignored even separate from the spiritual side of it uh, I mean personally I, I believe in erring more on the side of, of uh, a promiscuity than on the side of chastity I'm not sure Ayn Rand would hold that position. I think she probably would prefer to err on the side of chastity versus on the side of promiscuity. But think about Dagny, or for that matter, um, Dominique, in Alice Shrugged and in, um, in The Fountainhead. I mean, I think each one of them sleeps with at least three men during the novel. Now, they're all, at least in Alice Shrugged, they're all men of substance that they really love, but they're not the love. Only one of the men is the love, right? And I won't give that away. Um, in Fountainhead, Dominique sleeps with men she doesn't necessarily love. I mean, she sleeps with, uh, with what's his name, um, Keating. And granted, that's not an example of what the sex should be, but it, it shows that Ayn Rand was not exactly a prude when it comes to, 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 to sex. So, I, you know, I was shocked coming from Israel, which has a much healthier attitude towards sex, coming to America. It, to see how prudish and Christian the culture in the U.S. is. And as a consequence, when you're secular, the rebellion against that is pure materialism. Pure materialism. Um, so I suspect Europe has a, a, a slightly healthier attitude towards sex than the United States. I don't know about Asia. I, I really, that would be interesting. It would be interesting to figure out what the attitude in a place like China or South Korea is towards sex. Now, if you watch the show that I loved, um, okay, so let me say something about the show. Um, what was it called? Um, Mr. Sunshine, which was a Korean show, which I loved and I highly recommend, which is on Netflix. It has a fantastic view of love. I mean, I, mean, I, I think I told you a little bit about this on other shows. It's, it's three men. They all love the same woman, and she loves one of them, and and their relationship is clearly spiritual and values-oriented and passionate. And yet, the whole show, there's no sex. And, and that is suspicious. I mean, and I think it deterred from my enjoyment of the show. 
Because the fact that the hero and the heroine who love each other passionately, they didn't even kiss, I don't think. I think kiss on a cheek or something. There wasn't a passionate kiss, and there was, there was not sex even once between them. I think it's sad and, and unnecessary. And again, it has to do with the kind of prudishness that Korean culture has. And I don't know where it comes from, and I don't know why. Um, it also has to do with one of the premises of the movie. But I think, I think the sex would have overcome the premise. She's from an aristocratic family, and he's, he's from a slave family. So the sex would have shattered that barrier. Their love began the shattering. The sex would have shattered it completely. And I think the biggest flaw in the whole show was the fact that they never had sex. Now, granted, I probably have one of the more, what would be the term? Um, more uh, uh, opposite of prudish, promiscuous, whatever, opposite of prudish attitudes within objectivism about sex. So I believe you should have it. Have it often, have it with people you like, enjoy it, find pleasure in it. Hopefully you can find a soulmate that you can have the best sex of your life with. But don't deny yourself sex because you can't find your soulmate.